Now is a great time to dive into how we got here. Why did the system of a home evolve into what we see today? So, the original shelter, a tree in a field. You wake up on the ground, having been cold all night, and now you're wet with dew. We can do better. Yeah. You build a fire. Now you can cook and you're warm, but only on the half of your body that's facing the flames. We can do better. Probably by accident, you discover that you can warm both sides of your body when you sleep by building a short reflecting wall that bounces the heat back at you from behind. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's build taller walls and put a roof on it. Awesome. Now we have a real shelter for our family to protect us from the wind and weather, but there's a problem. It's so dark in here. We can do better. Great idea. Punch a door and some windows in our walls. And now life is better than ever. We have fresh air, light, we can see when the neighbors are about to knock and hide if we need to. No one wants a home without doors and windows. But like anything else, they have upsides and downsides. And in order to get better control of your own home's performance, you need to understand how they influence the invisible dynamics around you. So let's shed some light on it. So where to place windows is a very important conversation. And we're going to get into this when we talk about the sun and the effect of the sun on your house later. But this over here is the energy model. It's just a bunch of numbers. But the numbers are very important. So what we have here is the house built inside of the computer environment with these numbers. All we've done is build all of the walls and then we're going to simulate the heat flow through these walls, which is a very simple mathematical calculation. You could actually build an energy model on a piece of paper if you really wanted to. I do not want to, so I use this software for it. But essentially, I've got the size of the building, the amount of air inside of it, and I have, importantly here, the windows and doors that appear to be windows. That's any door that has a bunch of glass in it. And we've decided on a triple pane window with argon gas inside. So if I hit this button, all of a sudden, I have populated all of the annual energy costs, the annual consumption of heating and uh, electricity that I'm going to use. And I can see that my total costs is about $1,500 a year on utilities if we use these triple pane windows. If I was to replace all of these with a quadruple pane window that is twice as insulated, now it's $1,541. So I just saved my family $22 a year by buying windows that are twice as insulated and have twice the solar heat gain coefficient. If I was to step back and see what happens if I put in a worse window, let's just, for the sake of argument, put in the worst window, which is a single pane metal window. So now we rerun this and my $1,500 a year turns into 1983. I cost my family another $450 a year in utility bills by using the worst window available. This modeling process is how you determine what you are gonna spend money on and how you prioritize what to take seriously in performance. Once we settled on the exact insulation value that we are looking for with the windows, there's a bunch of other factors to consider. You can have windows that don't move, like these, they're called fixed that is beneficial for performance because they don't have a lot of air leakage and water leakage issues that other windows that do move like this one would. This one is called a casement. So it opens up like a door. This window is a typical American install, which is known as a nail fin install. So it's basically got this fin all the way around. You slide the window in from the outside and the fin meets up with the building and then you attach it. As you can see, we've got screws here through this buck. We're gonna tape and seal everything around the window on both the inside and the outside, with the exception of here at the bottom. On the bottom and the outside, we leave this unsealed in any window install because just in case water gets in, it can come back out where it belongs on the outside. We do, of course, since we're in Atlanta, want to limit the amount of sun's rays that are coming in and heating up this space. But we also opted for the radiant barrier that is the low E coating that's gonna prohibit heat from bleeding out through this window at night. We know from the energy model that this is gonna be good enough to give us the performance that we're looking for. Remember, you're always trying to tune not just the enclosure to itself, which we're gonna get into in the next episode, but we're trying to tune the enclosure to the heating and cooling and drying and ventilation machines that we're gonna install in this, the engines, which we're gonna get into in later episodes. Don't let anybody just rush you into, oh, here's what you want, everybody buys this one, it's what's good. It's the same as going into a restaurant and saying, what's good here? And they say, well, this is the most popular. 
that's not what you want. If you're watching this show, you want special stuff that most other people are not after. So look into the options. Again, we're looking at insulation value. We're looking at what the sun can do coming in, what heat will be able to leave going through, what the functionality of the window is, which way it opens, if it opens at all. And all of that goes into your decision making for these windows. And remember that a giant glass door is a window that's just humongous. So you want to make the same exact decisions in that case.